peace and shalom. This is Dr. Cynthia Marie Whitman, and welcome to my podcast. Preference. In this writing, I am not as certain that the feelings you are experiencing are not real. I am definitively saying that feelings and the facts or events that we experience are two different phenomena. So let's begin talking about feelings. How do you feel in your heart when you are complete, completely obsessed with another person, place, or thing? Is it draining or depressing? Do you feel depleted or unhappy? Are you frustrated, miserable, or upset most of the time? I could give you a long list of synonyms. And if you are obsessing over a person, place, or thing, then I'm sure you can pick a few feelings from the list that follows. Which one would you choose from this list? Bitter, pessimistic, sorrowful, gloomy, out of sorts, down in the dumps, heavy hearted, heart sick? Do any of these feelings fit? The list goes on and on. If it is a person, does it feel as if your heart is breaking? Or are you upset with them because you believe they are not obsessing over you the same way you are obsessing over them? If it is a place, are you obsessing over not being in a certain place of your desire, like longing to live in a different place than the one you are currently in? Or maybe it is a material possession that you wish you had, like a car or a house, but are unable to afford it at this time. Think about it. Are you tired of feeling drained, depleted, frustrated, or upset over not having what you want? Or maybe you are not obsessed and are a patient person and already instinctively realize that you will get what you envision. In that case, maybe you can give this podcast to someone who can benefit from it. What does the, does the heart have to do with the things that we desire? Shalom. What does our My heart have Dr. to do Cynthia with the way Marie. we think? Well, the good book says, what I'm as a man, today, woman, a think message. it in his, her heart, as so man, is he or she. Woman, another another reference heart. is Proverbs 14.30, which says, mm-hmm. a heart so, at peace gives life to the body. Are they talking about the physical heart or are they talking about a mind at peace? I would say both the mind and the heart are affected. Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Jeremiah 29.13 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your heart. Ecclesiastes 11.10 says, Banish anxiety from your heart and cast off the trouble of your body. And Psalms 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So how can we preserve your energy? Don't give your energy to another person, place, or thing. How can we give our energy to another, you may ask? We do that by operating based on how we feel, keeping our attention or focus on the other person instead of going about our business and creating something purposeful or serving others. We obsess by looking for ways to satisfy what we think would make the other person happy, often ignoring our dreams and desires. I use a person because most people can relate to this. So again, moving blindly through our feelings is what many people do. We obsess by trying to get another person's attention, sometimes begging, even demanding their love. If you find yourself obsessed with another person in this way, it will often leave you depleted, especially if they are not reciprocating the same energy that you exert. Shalom. It can be so My detrimental sometimes Cynthia to be Marie. to the point of not being able to and function. What I'm bringing you today the same goes for obsessing over message. living or traveling elsewhere instead of As appreciating man, where you are temporarily planted. 
Have you ever heard the phrase, bloom, where you are planted? You do this by appreciating the precious moments of, in quotes, now, where you are. The same goes for desiring something you do not currently possess or constantly pining over a possession that is out of reach at the moment. If this is the case, then stop. Stop sending your power out into the ether, feeling sad, lonely, moody, disappointed, and at times hopeless. So what makes us obsessive and how can we spare our feelings? First of all, there is nothing wrong with desiring another person. Play the poor thing, especially if the desire for the person is reciprocal. Or the place or thing is something you are actively working towards. To begin with, usually, whatever it is we are obsessing over is something that we have seen at one point or another with our physical eyes. Although you can obsess over things that you have not seen, like a future mate, you would have seen what a mate is. So you can classify a mate as something that you have seen in that case. The same goes for a person or place. In other words, the idea would have come from somewhere. Like her shown. I listened to a speaker whose first name is Myron. He's a famous speaker and he suggests that in order to stop obsessing, we should frame the idea or the facts about the person, place, or thing. For example, maybe the fact is that Someone was looking for a mate, has tried to date more than one person, and has not found a mate yet. In fact, three people. The fact here is that they have tried three times to secure a partner, and it didn't work. Usually, the person develops a story or idea around dating and not finding a mate, making it negative. That idea causes an obsession and feelings of inadequacy. So what happens that causes us to lose faith in many cases? My journey has led me to believe that a person can have faith in both positive and negative things. In either case, a person predicts a certain outcome based on their idea or the facts that occur. In their heart, they either believe that things will work out favorably or that things will be a disaster. The perfection in the way things work, positive or negative, in the universe is that we get what we most secretly desire in our hearts. Remember in the book of Job 3.25 where he says, For the thing I feared has overtaken me, and what I dreaded has happened to me. He was manifesting the very conditions he found himself experiencing in the book of Job. Or what about being deliberate in our perspective and believing in Psalms 37, 4, which says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Or how about taking Proverbs 23, 7 for granted? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what really happened? We look at the facts and instead of realizing simply what happened, happened, and that's that, we begin to make up a story around it or we begin to make meaning or we begin to create a script around it. Oh, how masterful we are. Now, and if the script we make is negative, we begin to believe the story we created and doubt, also known as faith, becomes the focus, believing the scenario we have created. Unfortunately, according to Dr. Nadine Burke Harris, MD, when we do this, we believe that fear is present and we feel off balance and according to science, stress is experienced because humans have been equipped with a response system called fight or flight or freeze. When we experience fear of anything like not being wanted or not 
having what we desire immediately or fearing that we'll never have a mate, stress hormones are released, in co which are called adrenaline and cortisol, and we begin to live in a frenzy for as long as we worry that we choose and we call it worry. And it's purely our positive imagination at work. The body doesn't know that there's no real danger happening. It just believes our powerful feelings. Many of us live with this worry all the time. And until we begin to do the inner work that is needed to view the facts from a positive perspective, we will continue to hurt ourselves, causing undue stress imposed by our own thinking and rendering us powerless. Alternatively, if the script is positive, that a person creates around a fact or idea, then positive results will ensue. For example, let's say the person makes up, that same person from before makes up that having three dates without finding a mate is perfect. They got to experience the character of three possible mates and none of them met the mark. So they both get to experience other possible mates until there is a click. Now they both still see hope and the possibility of obtaining a mate. They do not feel hopeless. Let's place the power back in our court. They are living by the scriptures. We are living by the scriptures when we stay positive. Psalm 37, 4 says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So why do you worry? We do not have to worry. Peace and shalom.